interesting tidbit is that if you are going to ask a question on Zoom, that's wonderful, but please remember that those that actually showed up today get first call, and so they get to ask their questions first. Um, but we will try to get to as many uh, questions as possible, and per usual, any that aren't answered, I will happily send them to Daniel, and he will happily respond and answer them. With that, um, I get the honor and the pleasure of introducing Daniel Davis, who is clearly everyone in this room and everyone in Zoom land supports the chamber. We all support the chamber. Without the chamber, we, you know, who knows, right? The chamber's done so much. They take a lot, um, a lot of thought and consideration and time into, uh, you know, our city as a whole and then as an individual. I have the pleasure, um, and also my coworker, Alan DeVault, in the room. We have the pleasure of beginning to work real closely with Daniel. And actually, had it not been for the Chamber, as one of our four catalyst funders, Build Up Downtown wouldn't even exist. So huge thanks to the Chamber, and thank you, Daniel, for all your support. I'm going to give a little bit of a bio, even though we all think that we know everything about Daniel. But I was reading some things, and I guess that we really don't. Sorry, I'm also going blind and being told I should be wearing these more regularly. So um, Daniel was named president and CEO in 2013, and his focus was on promoting business-friendly policy, growing an entrepreneurial culture, and reaching out to the entire community. It's led to significant membership increases during his tenure. Under his leadership, the chamber is one of the four national finalists for the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives in 2016. I didn't know that. I thought that was very interesting. Prior to joining the chamber, Daniel was executive director of NEFPA, Florida's largest local membership trade association representing the building and construction industry in Duval, Clay, Nassau, and St. John's. Daniel previously served on the Jacksonville City Council and was elected president of council in 2007, the youngest person to serve in his capacity. He also served four years in the State House of Representatives representing District 15, which covers part of Duval County. Daniel serves on tons of local boards. He has throughout his time here. Um, he is currently with Enterprise Florida, Space Florida, the St. John's River Water Management District, the First Coast YMCA, and the Monique Burr Foundation. Daniel's been married to his wife, Rebecca, for 25 years, you guys, and they have four kids. And without him, we wouldn't be who we are today. So with that, if y'all will help me welcome Daniel Davis. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was a, a great intro. It means uh, so much to me. And uh, this morning, I always get a text in the morning from someone who wants to make sure I am actually showing up to the breakfast meeting. And uh, so uh, Laura sent me a text and I said, um, is that th this morning? And this was like 10 minutes before it starts and did the same thing to Meg a couple weeks ago. But the, you, what the key part of that, if you're trying to play that joke, you have to come up with a real place that you're going to be that is like believable. And Jen W is happening out at UNF right now. I went out to the reception last night. And so I said, I'm out at UNF. I don't, I don't understand. Somebody messed. A little panic, a little panic moment. Yeah, so. So anyway, um, Ben Johnson made me pour my coffee out of my Whataburger cup and put it in a Martin coffee cup. Yeah, it makes you feel proud of our SBLYs, Frank. And uh, Jim, I appreciate all your hard work. Um, representing the downtown council. So um, anyway, i um, so happy to be here with you today. I feel like I'm going to be a huge letdown because it was basically a comedy show for the first uh, 15 minutes. I mean, y'all were hit, you were hitting your lines pretty, pretty tight, man. That was good. I was, I was back there laughing. I'm thinking, are they passing mimosas around? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I bet, let me tell you something. I, yeah, you got some, got some, uh, well, all right, let's move on to, um, I, I, it's, it's really difficult when I know they're recording on Zoom because that's always like this permanent record and I have to behave myself. But anyway, I, I have um, truly, uh, last time I met with you, we were talking about how we thought last year was going to be a banner year for the chamber. And in, in a moment of crisis with the pandemic, um, we saw in Northeast Florida um, for the last two years, incredible growth. And uh, I think Tony alluded to it uh, about real estate, what's happening right now. It's absolutely incredible. Um, Andre pulled me aside and told Andre Wallace, who runs Jack's USA Partnership, if you don't have met him yet. Um, we have 87 active, um, what we call hot prospects in the pipeline right now. And that's, um, that's serious companies that are, we believe, a high likelihood of moving their corporate headquarters or 
uh, major job growth into Jacksonville. And so I don't think this uh, excitement and this action we're seeing in Northeast Florida is going to slow down at any time um, in the near future. And that's not going to be uh, the same story in other states uh, for um, different reasons. But I think what you're going to see mainly in the southern states and in Florida especially is um, incredible growth. So be bullish on that. So I'm very excited about it. I hope you are too. But the Chamber's been uh, enjoying a lot of success last year. One of our best uh, years with membership growth, our membership team uh, retention rates are incredibly important. And uh, last year we had the highest retention rate we've had uh, since I've been at the chamber, which in, like I said, in a COVID pandemic timeframe, that's pretty incredible. And then that tells you something that means we're providing high value to our members. And, and you wouldn't be sitting here today if there wasn't value in your membership at the chamber and the ability for you to connect and we're super excited about that. Um, the Jacks USA team has been uh, as busy as can be and responding to RFIs uh, every day um, over the weekends, working um, to try to respond to folks that are looking to move here to Jacksonville. Last year, um, we were able to announce Dun & Bradstreet moving to town. Um, incredible opportunity. You're starting to see the FIS uh, building come into um, its own, and it's actually absolutely beautiful. Um, you're, you're going to see continued growth with FinTech. We were able to um, announce Nimbus uh, moving into the ViStar headquarters. Uh, there are about 600 FinTech-related um, jobs, close to 100,000 on average um, a piece. That's incredible for our community. You're starting to see downtown repopulate, which I think is incredibly important. And um, talking to the different CEOs and the folks that lead um, their companies, uh, most everybody is talking about a uh, percentage of folks that are moving moving in, um, back into downtown. That doesn't mean, I've, in my opinion, I don't know if 100% of folks that are working from home are going to come back into the headquarters, but I definitely believe that they are making a move to move everybody back. It's interesting because I've talked to a couple CEOs recently, and, and they're trying to balance between how hard it is to find talent some people still enjoy working from the um, from the house or from a mobile place and then getting people back so you don't lose the culture, the total culture of your company, which is, um, in my opinion, that's, that's a tough one to figure out. And I think that we will over the next couple of years, but um, that's going to be exciting. I think you're going to start seeing more people walking in downtown. Tonight, um, the, Gabe Davis's birthday today. And um, we're going to bring uh, him and a group of nine boys down to do a, a photo scavenger hunt on, on the scooters downtown. One of them may end up in the river. Who knows? But they're going to have fun for a little bit. And I, for some reason, I told Rebecca, um, if these moms let these boys do this, that, it's kind of on them. I mean, <laughs> they know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what could go wrong? You got them looking at their phone and riding the scooters at the same time. Um, and then we're going to go to co the rooftop at Cochina and enjoy some great food. So um, I'm loving downtown. I, ca I can't believe um, the potential that we have and what we have coming. And I would tell you uh, the, there, the chamber is so all in. Um, and I'm excited about what we're going to see in the next couple of years, too. I was able to meet with the Jaguars uh, last week and um, understand more of what their desire is in downtown. And it's very, very exciting. The um, practice facilities under construction, um, that's critically important to making sure that we provide the right uh, facility for the Jags, not only the training facilities, but obviously the stadium, which is going to be a, a question that we're going to discuss over the next couple of years as a city. And um, I think um, we should do everything as an organization to make sure we stand next to the Jags, that we um, make sure that they know that we're a partner in business and um, that our, we as a community want to make sure that they never think about any other place and they're always stabilized here and period. I think that that's very important for us. And so we're, we're excited about that and the residential in downtown. Um, our goal has been to get to 10,000 residents living in downtown. And um, everyone in here knows that that's the viable uh, neighborhood number that causes all the other retail and restaurants and and cool things that make a neighborhood what a neighborhood. Um, 
uh, stable and you don't have to be as much a pioneer once you get to that number. Um, but in my opinion, that's just the tip of the iceberg for me. And um, we should be, as soon as we hit that 10,000 residents number, we should stake a claim on a much, much higher number um, in who is the, in downtown to become that global city we know we should be, all right? And I hope that is led by the downtown council and the chamber um, because uh, truly the market's there. I think that you, you would see that residential is um, very few vacancies in downtown. Um, that's why all of the national companies are looking now because um, now the price per square feet is kind of where it gets everybody's attention. And I don't see that slowing down at all. And so that's that's an exciting thing for us to, to stake that claim. And I would tell you, uh, not only are we going to bring huge companies to town and, and make sure that our downtown is what we know it should be to attract the best talent, um, but we have to also focus on making sure every neighborhood has a chance for success. And the chamber believes that we have a, a we're convicted that we have a unique role as being a community builder. Okay. And there are lots of folks in here that represent neighborhoods across Jacksonville that are very prosperous and um, not a lot of crime in most neighborhoods, but there are areas of high risk that don't have a lot of hope and um, are high risk that uh, the young folks coming out of those neighborhoods don't have um, the, the tools necessary to get where they know they could be to where they can land one of these jobs that we're bringing to town and we should make sure that that never is the case in our community and so the chamber's focused on um, making sure our foundation helps african-american owned um, businesses and entrepreneurs um, we started the lewis and white business league last year and um, we're already creating connections with larger companies connected to folks that want to do business with um, some of our major companies in town that just don't know how to connect and we believe that's what the chamber can be as the connector and um, I can't believe um, and can't wait to see all of the great successes that come out of that. We're also creating an African-American owned business directory. And I think that that's going to be something that the normal person, person will, uh, thanks to Bank of America, will be able to go online and just be able to pick um, quality, um, ready to uh, complete your project type businesses. So very excited that we can have our thumbprint on that and help folks um, have hope uh, for a better tomorrow. And uh, I'm honored to work at the chamber. Um, it's been eight years, which is hard to believe. And uh, it's just been, it's a delight every day when I drive to work. I smile the whole way to work because I get to represent my city in all over the world. So very excited about that. And I know the best part of this and interactive part is when I get to ask or answer questions that you wanna talk about. And so um, Jackie, I, I think that we need to be very careful with the questions that Jackie asks back in the back. <laughs> Are we on? No, 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 no. It's not censorship. I've had questions from her before. <laughs> we are at the downtown council and um, we're all about what goes on in downtown and there is no job more important than the mayor. So. Do you want to announce your mayorship running for mayor today? Did, did I? <laughs> I told you not to let her have the microphone. Hey, listen, um, that the the answer is no. Okay, um, but the truth is, my entire life I've wanted to serve Jacksonville. And so uh, one way or the other, I will. I don't know exactly what capacity that's gonna be, but I uh, love my city and will serve, hopefully serve that city till the day I die. Yes. Possible segue for you. Thank you. I'm sweating up here. <laughs> A number of people have talked about the housing market and how it's almost intolerably hot because there's no inventory and it's really, you know, most people are talk to realtors and they're like, it must be wonderful. And, and actually it's, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of drama. There's some trauma. It's, it's, it's pretty rough. And the problem is we've got overwhelming demand, which thank you. Thank you for creating a Jacksonville that has a lot of demand. Cause that wasn't the case when I first came here 20 something years ago, but there's no housing supply. And as former president of, of NEFPA and as, you know, leading the chamber, what, 
do you see do you see some solutions to some of that on the horizon? I think the last condo we had permitted, the last condo project was in 2007. I know the Beacon was permitted but was never built. But we haven't had any condos built here in forever. Uh, we got a lot of apartments, and they're popping up everywhere. But there's just not enough houses. Very, very complicated question and comment, and I appreciate it. And I understand. And and one thing that we have done in downtown um, is to make sure that, um, that we've already started workforce housing projects in downtown Jacksonville. Um, and we have to, what we've seen in all the other cities that we have visited in either the downtown trips or chamber trips is that if you don't get the workforce housing in place, people are going to be priced out so fast when you do see the growth. And so we do have much of that in downtown with the lofts, Jefferson Station and, and Brooklyn. And you see that um, we've got some more projects uh, even um, near the stadium and, and the cathedral district on the way. We have about 2,500 projects permitted either permitted or under construction right now. So that's strong. That's not pretty pictures. That's like real dirt moving, okay? Um, and I think we all know there's there's an issue with labor right now. Who in here has an issue with labor or talent? And they're, okay, everybody's hand is in the air. Um, everyone is dealing with that. The city's dealing with it in the permitting department. Um, we know that we know there needs to be more people that can handle uh, the applications that come in. Um, and um, unfortunately, there's there's hundreds of vacancies at the city that they're trying to hire people right now. I mean, so it, it, there, this is real. I just got through building my house and understanding the, um, the dramatic increase in uh, the supplies, the labor, the commodities that we use. Um, that it was incredible. I was already, you know, I'd crossed the Rubicon, so there was no turning back. Um, but you think about how hard that is to actually get people to to frame um, a project. So there are the the the, the um, complications of us bringing so many people to this community and that not slowing down is um, great because it's dri it's driving real estate prices. We're the second hottest market in the country. Okay, second hottest in the country. Um, but the consequences of folks that want to have a good job not having a place to live is something we have to take a look at. And in my opinion, I think the city should be looking at ways um, or the, if it's out of, if it's in a different County, um, the land that you own, what could possibly be used and set aside for workforce housing. And how do you, as a community, create a finance stack that a, a developer would make it worthwhile for you to come in and, and turn dirt. Cause let me tell you something, you don't work for and not make money. Okay. Everybody in here is a part of the chamber because you want to make a profit and that is good. Okay. That's what creates jobs. That's what's good and drives the economy. But we have to make it to where a developer says, hmm, I'll take a look at that piece of property. And if we don't do that, we're going to find ourselves um, further behind. Um, but there, I mean, it, it's, it's a very difficult, complicated question. And um, you, don't, you can't go in and start toying with the market. The market is the market. You start toying with it, and then you create problems for generations. And my, my thought is we have to come in and, and be deliberate about workforce housing and how do we make it, um, make, it uh, make financial sense for a developer to come in and build those. Yeah. So Daniel, in talking with uh, Aaron on Monday, of course, he's very proud of Cecil Spaceport. And he was mentioning the possibility that Cecil may also do vertical launches as well as the horizontal. So do you have anything on that? I am very excited about Cecil. And, and I, I grew up out on the west side um, and I represented that area for a long time. And um, some very uh, ingenious, unique companies looking to utilize one of the longest runways in the country and thousands of acres of developable property, developable, to say that one, developable property. Um, and uh, that's, that's uh, but we, we announced Boeing last year with uh, 300 new jobs and lots of CapEx. And that's not gonna slow down either. We, the, the prospects we have for advanced manufacturing and so on um, is incredible. Um, and I, I do believe most people don't know we have a spaceport in Northeast Florida. Um, we should be promoting that for many reasons. One, the Cape is full. Uh, they, their launches are 
I mean, they're scheduled out for the next couple of years. And we have a unique opportunity to be, um, you know, but the, the crumbs that fall off that table would be fantastic for us to get started with our spaceport. Um, so we'll be pushing that. Uh, and um, as far as the vertical launches go, um, I honestly am not in the middle of that. So I don't, I don't, I'm fine with the horizontal launches. And I think it's great for us to launch uh, the micro satellites uh, that way. And, and we'll see what the future holds. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning. The former Riverwalk retail space is now a beautiful grassy knoll. What, uh, what is the future of that? Have you heard anything uh, how we're going to generate walking traffic down there? What might be going in? The former landing site? Yes. Is that okay. Uh, Yes, I mean we we've seen renderings. I, I know that they're looking at uh, the the DIA's looking at proposals right now on developing that. Um, I would not be surprised if you don't see a building pad along with a really cool beer garden and uh, open space. Uh, I know that there are several companies interested in that, and um, I think it's going to be a hot hot. It's our our home plate, and we got to make sure it's done right. And and this is what I would tell you. Um, the parks along the river are incredibly important to development up along the river. And I am a firm believer that we have to have world-class parks that draw people to the river to activate, not cut people off from the river. And that means every person in the public should have that opportunity, not just folks that can afford it. And so uh, I will be pushing very hard to um, make sure that those parks are world class. Um, there are proposals out uh, right now and some renderings of what it could be. And I think that the chamber will be behind that. Most folks that look to see property values increase in downtown will be behind it. And um, all the developers would, you know, they're, they're crazy not to be behind it because it, it just brings more value to their property. So the, the idea would be to draw more people. I mean, you think about the design of the landing, it was not great. Um, and uh, there were places where it, Rebecca was pushing a stroller with the kids and somebody was riding a bike the other way. There's a high likelihood they run into each other. And, and that's just not, that doesn't draw people down. Um, so we need to make sure that there's plenty of shade, that there's ac active, uh, activation and opportunities for for folks to to be um, safe along the river so i will be supporting that and i think it's great for our downtown i think i think you're going to see that happen all right daniel since uh jackie got to ask you about the uh, elephant in the room i want to ask you about the gorilla in the room um and that is the homeless situation downtown i, I am 100 percent all for helping people that want help and need help but I'm also 100% for not doing it in the core city. So what can we, or possibly the, as the chamber, or what could the next mayor possibly do about something like that? Yeah. Uh, so, so number one, I think we're, I'm in the same place, Frank. We're, we're, we as a community, we will l never let someone go hungry or without shelter. Jacksonville's not gonna do that, okay? That doesn't mean you have to perform services in the, in the central business district. OK, and and I think that that's uh, something that we have to it's a delicate issue that we have to make sure that we are um, treating people the right way and allowing people to get the treatment they need. Many times a mental health uh, situation, not a criminal situation. And so uh, I will be focused on that. I think that you've already seen um, Soulsblocker make moves on um, the women and children in their uh, center and and how they can do training. Um, and have a, a better opportunity uh, for folks um, in li living conditions. And I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see some of that take place. Uh, and um, I, this is the other thing I would tell you, um, and I've used this analogy before, if, if Rebecca's walking down the street by herself and she encounters uh, a homeless person that is coming up to ask for money. She probably is going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Okay. If she's walking down the street with 20 other people that are professionals coming out of the Vice Star building and, you know, you got a busy street and you have a homeless person come up, it, it's a different perception altogether. Okay. So it's very important that we repopulate downtown. Okay. That's, that's critical. And it's very important that we help folks get the treatment that they need. And it, like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be 
in the central business district. And, and I will and have worked with the providers to help find the best location for that. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I'd so the question was the fountain and then kid friendly. And the answer is, I believe your definition of kid friendly is the same as mine. And I think they are doing that. Um, were you going to say something about So if you're online, the answer was yes. It's um, the question is by the fountain, uh, would there be uh, kid friendly environments and there's going to be botanical gardens, uh, playgrounds, light shows. So yes. Yeah. Mr. Love. Okay, so the question was, uh, if you're online, um, are, how hard are we pushing for the companies coming to town uh, to go downtown? And what industries are we talking about? And one beauty of our community is we are not dependent on one uh, industry, okay? And we, ha we have experts in advanced manufacturing, logistics, aviation, fintech, health tech, biosciences on staff that work for you every day. And we, we, we go after those industries because they're high paying, most of the time, very clean jobs. And so I would tell you the industries that we see are um, very strong FinTech, bio, health related industries. Um, we are also seeing a very, very strong interest in, um, in advanced manufacturing because I think what we've seen in supply chain and issues of manufacturing overseas and then needing product here, uh, I think companies are realizing that the world is more volatile today and they need to get product built back here. So you, it, what we're seeing, the advanced manufacturing interest would be on the west side, Cecil area, um, up at the Crawford Diamond in Na Nassau County. Okay, very, a lot of interest there. Uh, every time a professional corporate headquarters, say a Dun & Bradstreet, um, comes to look at Jacksonville, first thing we do is show them downtown, okay? And um, in many cases, they are very, very interested. We, we, they, we usually give two or three different options um, and say if there were three options, two of them would be downtown, one would be somewhere else. And then what we do at that point is when the client decides he or she wants to go um, here or there, then as a good business owner, we, we help the customer get where they want to be. And so, um, yes, we've pushed very, very hard about downtown. The mayor has been very supportive about, about that. Whenever we, we've had, we will bring extra incentives to bring in, bring the folks downtown. Um, and then it's up to the, the person that is site selecting to decide. Parking are, always comes into play. Um, other, other issues always come into play as far as that. Um, you, you'll see, you'll see much more growth in downtown, um, and that will uh, continue the business. The uh, the well, I think I answered your question. You you asked about how we push downtown and what industries. So, and I can't tell you any names. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. How are uh, you? Kind of following up on that question, we've talked about a lot of growth, and it's been evident here in downtown over the past you know five years. Uh, we've talked about, you know, the homeless, the, you know, construction, housing, marketing. Is there a particular aspect to growing downtown that we can lend our support that needs our support, especially right now? Well, I, I think that, it, number one, um, thank God that the, the city council approved the, the uh, renovations for uh, the practice field um, and the training facility for the JAGS and the shipyards deal, which I think was handled in a much better way uh, with the community, the JAGS. Uh, 
I think it's a great deal for the city because uh, the Jags will maintain Metro Park in the shipyards and the marina at a Four Seasons level. And uh, we all know that the city's not going to be able to mow in twice a month to keep it up the way it should be. Um, so that's that's very important. Um, and I think that uh, we all in here know that retail chases rooftops. And the more rooftops we create, you are going to have that vibrant lifestyle that's going to attract the best talent because we know today that the best talent coming out of our universities don't want to move to a suburb. Okay. They don't, they want to go to an exciting urban environment where they can walk to work and then meet their friends after at a cool place. So um, that's something we have to do if we're going to stay um, where we know we should be in attracting the best talent. And uh, I would tell you, um, the best thing that we could do is get behind when you know that there are big projects that are coming up to get behind them, to let your voice be heard. That's what uh, Build Up Downtown is is going to be organizing. Um, and it's that that sense of there are sometimes tough issues come before either DIA or the city council. And you need to know, is there a constituency out there? And I would say whenever you're called um, to enter the arena, jump in. Let's go. Let people know how important this is for downtown. So, but I would say number one issue is uh, residential. You have to have it. And this is the other thing I would tell you. And I don't care if this is on um, recorded. Once we get to 10,000 people living in downtown, we should stake a claim that we are going to build 10,000 residential units in downtown in eight years. That's what we should do. And then let's figure it out. And let's give developers answers quicker. You know, that doesn't mean skip through the process. That means tell them yes or no quicker so they can move on or or they can adjust and so um i think that's going to be a community effort that we're going to have to make but um you don't think we'd be a global city everybody's proud of if we didn't have that many people in downtown creating jobs yes Um, well, uh, the, the problem is most of my, the people that don't have chickens don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and they're most, they, if I tell, if I know if I, if I tell my chicken stories, though, people will walk out going, well, I never, you know, and then they, um, you know, listen, uh, we, we had, we do not have chickens anymore because my labor force has aged out. <laughs> and that means the Davis kids don't clean the chicken coop anymore. And if they're not cleaning it, I'm not. Uh, so, um, but we've had some, some pretty crazy, uh, I no, I'm not going to tell that one either, but I, I will tell you this one and we'll finish with this. Okay. Is that okay? I think. Okay. Yeah. But let me let me answer your question, then I'll finish off with the uh, the chicken story I have. Uh, just to touch on the uh, downtown area, you know, developing like the shipyards and everything. Uh, I spent about eight years working in D.C. They did something similar with the wharf right. that they developed there. Is that kind of the plan that you're sort of to make the river walk on the other side of walkable, like entertainment, restaurants, from basically the high all the way down to where the stadium is, or, you know, you've seen renderings, but you never know if any of that's actually been approved or if that's really the goal. Great question. And, and it, it is, that is absolutely the goal is to take that area and turn it into an active park. And we have celebrated thanks to a lot of hard work, um, bringing the USS Orlick to town. If you haven't seen it, it's absolutely majestic, isn't it? And if you see it at night, I mean, that is, that is awesome. Great job, Jim. <clears throat> um, I, I did not realize how pretty it was until I stood out there and saw it with the blue light on. I was standing by the Hyatt looking at it and you had the, the, the um, Acosta blue light behind it. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. So I can't wait to see how that, and that's going to create more activ activation. And um, you have, uh, you're going to have four to five new marinas in downtown. 
And those marinas are going to have um, what you call transient slips that are not monthly slips to where you're out on the river and you're enjoying the afternoon with your friends. You go, hey, let's go up and uh, we'll go get some sushi at, at uh, Four Seasons or we'll go over to the River's Edge or what, you, whatever. Um, who's that, Jackie? That's not anybody. Media. Yeah, I'm like. Um, so I think that you're going to see an incredibly different view in the next five years. I, I think the skyline is going to look different. I think you're going to see much more activity with folks that can can pull up to a slip and and go to any restaurant or the beer garden at the landing. Um, so uh, you should be very excited about that. And I think that the current administration is is serious about it. And um, I bet the next administration would be very serious about it. <laughs> So I, I, I told you the story about when we found we had a rooster instead of a hen, right? Okay. You know, you don't want roosters. Okay. That's, that's the number one issue. No roosters, but you, it's hard to tell as a chick if they are. And so I can't believe I'm telling you guys this. So we, we got some, some of the prettiest, um, which, which ones are the ones with the fluffy feet, the, uh, yeah, they, we got silkies and um, they, we had reds and a couple others, but we got some silkies and um, my daughter, that's what she saved her for money to buy a couple silkies. Well, about three or four weeks later, all of a sudden, one of them is a juvenile. They're still juveniles. And he he's, sits in the backyard and he's going, Arr! and we go, what was that? Because, you know, that's not a normal sound. And he's like, you see him start doing this and he's Arr! And he was like, oh, my goodness, did he did he just crow? I mean, that that thing, that may be a rooster. And we're like, no, there's no way. Well, a couple of weeks later, this guy turns into the meanest rooster you've ever – chasing the kids, chasing the hens around. I mean, just terrorizing the entire backyard and um, just doing mean things to the hens. They're all – all day long, they just hide under whatever tree they can find, bush, just trying to stay away from this rooster. And finally, Rebecca Day saw the uh, the abuse that was going on, and she said, "Not today. No longer is this happening in my backyard." And she said, um, "You're taking care of that rooster tomorrow, and he's not spending one more night in the hen house." And so, I said, "Yes, ma'am." And uh, we we I told him I was like, "Dude, you messed up." And uh, and uh, all the hens. He's locked out, and they're all looking like, "Yep." You know, like you can see them all just standing there going, "What's going to happen to you, buddy?" And so um, I wake up the next morning, and you know, it's like, it's is that my timer? I can't tell you the rest of the story. I'm done. No, um, I wake up the next morning knowing I have to take care of an issue I don't want to take care of. You know, I got things I needed. I don't need one more thing to take care of, but I had to because we weren't going to let this happen anymore. And um, I walk out into the backyard and there are white feathers everywhere. And I go, that's weird. And um, because he had been out of the hen house that night, just kind of free range. Um, they all free range during the day, but then they all go in at night. And uh, it's like, man, I don't see the, the rooster anywhere. <laughs> oh my God, maybe this was taken care of for me. Um, and then I turn around, I look over, and in the pool, floating face down, that dude. Something chased it right into the pool, and uh, they don't swim very well. And so, uh, you know, thank God my my issue is taken care of. Um, the ne the next, I'm looking at the hen house, and, and all of the hens are like, "We saw everything that happened." I mean, I never did, but um, so the the guy that was terrorizing our backyard was no longer, and it was actually a good answer to to the problem. So. That's one more story I have. Y'all have a great day. Thank you, Daniel, so very, very much um, for closing us out with your end story. All right, we're going to have Meg Hines come up and tell us just what's going on with the chamber. And then Gracie and I are going to do 50-50 wrap all those fun things. I'll just go from here. I'll probably pull a hammy getting up on stage. Um, hi, everybody. The next upcoming chamber-wide function is our annual business expo trade show. That's Monday at UNF from 4 to 7. 
I know several of you are going to be exhibitors, so thank you. There will be a power networking session just beforehand at 2.30, but early bird pricing ends today at noon, and then we will do walk-ups as well. So 4 to 7, UNF at the University Center, and hope to see you there. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Meg. Um, so thank you so much for being a part of today's meeting. Hey, Zoom land, we're going to go ahead and do some 50-50 um, raffle for those of you that are in person and bought tickets. And then we have a couple of door prizes, too, to pass out on the way. Um, so without further ado, the 50-50 is $52. So get out your tickets. Um, I feel like they need it. Yeah, there we go. We're getting creative. <laughs> okay. Nine, six, four, two, four, nine, eight. Sean! Sean Stenson, $52. Congratulations. All right. Worth just as much. We have Frank's bag of nuts. Two of them. Lucky winner number nine six four two five three four. Jason Pratt, congratulations. And final bag of nuts nine six four two five six seven. Ben Johnson, congratulations. Great. Uh, so thank you so much um, for bringing those, Frank. Um, so as you may know, our downtown council meetings are on the first and third Friday of every month. This is the first Friday of the month. Um, and our third Friday of the month falls on a holiday weekend. So we've actually canceled that meeting, but instead we're hosting our first social of the year later this month. So. Many of you got so excited about all the things that are happening at Standard Feed and Seed tomorrow with Sean Sensen, Blessings in a Backpack, and Standard Feed and Seed. Well, you can come back on Wednesday, April 27th from 5.30 to 7.30, and we will have our first uh, networking social there. And also play Chicken Poop Bingo, should the night... Uh... Oh, no. Yeah, Sean's saying strategy tomorrow, get the lay of the land, pick your favorite chick, and then hope that it's there three weeks later, and then you can you bid on that chick again. So um, again, there's an event tomorrow supporting Sean and Frank, um, celebrating their 75th plus one, and then downtown council will host a networking social later this month on April 27th. Um, so that is kind of our next meeting. Thank you so much for being here today. Check downtowncouncil.org for more information or keep a lookout for Brian Tuttle, our membership chair's next email for future meetings. But we are so grateful to have you here with a packed house. Thank you, Daniel, so much for being here and, and sharing more about the chamber and, and your vision for our city. And without further ado, I hope you have an incredible weekend. Thank you. <laughs>